You know, there's a whole lot to talk about when it comes to Texas football these days, but especially when we talk strategy. So this is an angle we don't get into as uh, as much as I would like here at uh, the Voice of College Football. We got the Texas Homer on the line to talk some hook 'em horns. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. I am doing just fine. Appreciate you jumping on board and everybody head on over after you watch this video uh, to the uh, Texas Homer channel. Just uh, put it right there in the search bar and you will find his channel. Some great breakdowns on the X's and the O's. So we got one of the best in the business coming in on the offensive side in Steve Sarkeesian. Completely different staff. So your, your work is cut out for you in regards to trying to figure out what's going to happen this year because we're talking a complete different coaching staff. And also the quarterback, who seems like he's been the starter since like 1994, is gone. And uh, so you got a whole new deal. And Casey Thompson's probably going to be the starter. But at the same time, there's still going to be a quarterback battle. So your thoughts about what you've had to work on in regards to matching the personnel that you know really well with what you're learning about Sark and his staff. That, that's been the big question. And so whenever I was making a Sark strategy video, I was researching – I probably watched 10 games, pulled interviews from all the contemporaries and a bunch of his interviews and clinics. So he's a big philosophy guy. So it's all about the heart of what's he's, what he's doing. And then his plays will build off of that. So he's looking to feature guys, right? So he wants a Devonte Smith type, which could possibly be, I'm not going to go that far, but Josh Thompson is, you know, is good there. Josh, I mean, Joshua Moore is good there. So he can be used kind of on pre-snap motion and can get away from the defense. And then the biggest thing is going to be Bajan used in the passing game, used almost an absurd amount. So his philosophy is take your best guys, put them in the best positions to win, and then let them go play. You know, when it comes to Texas recruiting, there hasn't been much of an issue. Uh, we know what the record's been for the last 10 years, and pretty much since the conclusion of the BCS championship game in 09, this program has underachieved under Charlie Strong uh, and under, of course, Tom Herman, who was an offensive guru of sorts. That was the reputation coming in from Ohio State and Houston. Um, the, I would guess, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, in, as I've evaluated the talent, the talent has been great on both sides of the ball, but more so on defense. Uh, the offensive side has certainly been capable of more than it's shown. So what has been your your biggest criticism or head-scratching moment in regards to why aren't they utilizing this personnel this way or that way? So Tom Herman was very particular in the scheme he wanted to run, and he calls it power spread, right? So a lot of air raid kind of passing concepts along with power runs, meaning you're pulling guards or tackles, right? So this is kind of it's very similar to what Lincoln does, but Lincoln has a better understanding there. And so Tom kept trying to force uh, a square peg into a round hole. And so he would try to turn our players into some of the players he had from Ohio State. And those aren't our players. Jake Smith is very fast. We needed him fast, but we bulked him up and made him a, a little tough guy running around. And so we, he just not using, he's trying to force everyone into his scheme. And because of that, and he would not alter from it. And that's what was so frustrating is that he could not get out of his own way. Cause you're hundred percent right, Mark, we have the guys. Our recruiting, was, we have two top five classes, I think a number eight, and then last year was 17. Um, and 17 is because everybody kind of saw the writing on the wall for Tom. So we have the guys. It's just we have not been developing them, and we have not been utilizing them correctly in our schemes. Um, we had good play callers. Yersic is a good play caller. Uh, Tom was supposed to be a good play caller, um, but – it just, for some reason, that spread against the opponents we were consistently playing in the Big 12, they had us sniffed out. So development's an issue. Uh, you know, it's something that uh, has been mastered at places like Wisconsin where they're bringing in top 25 to 40 classes and turning out top 15 teams. And the opposite where Texas is the poster child of the top 5 to 10 class that's <laughs> playing 500 football. So... Yep. On the offensive side, what would be the development issues? Who are those guys that you've seen come through the program and think, you know, he's the same player as a senior as he was a freshman? So we had almost, I mean, a lot of them, um, sadly. And so it's um, Sam. Sam was on a great trajectory, and I, everyone, you know, had their issues with Sam. But if you looked at him marking his junior year, I mean, his junior year was awesome. 
and he regressed senior year. Um, and I think due to mostly injuries, but we didn't get the most out of Sam there. We couldn't, we couldn't peak with him when we needed to. We have Jake Smith, who was the Arizona Gator Gatorade player of the year, super fast four, 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 five ish. Um, but we never used him for that. Our strength and development made him put on a lot of weight. And so we lost his value. Then we have Joshua Moore who had an incident, uh, with the school prior and now he's back on the team and he's really talented and he can go up and get the ball on post. He, I mean, he, he you'll see him on highlight reels. So he's somebody too, that we kind of underutilized. And at times we realized how good he was and we would try to force it to him and that didn't work either. So really I would, our offensive line, our young guys on there are really good. I like our young guys. Um, but they're still developing and coming up. So I, I really, besides running back and Bajan, I don't think I've seen anybody hit their full potential. People have done well, um, but what I think they could do in totality, I don't think we've achieved that yet. Yeah, you mentioned Joshua Moore, and I think back to the Oklahoma State game in which he caught the game-winning touchdown pass, but he was pretty much absent from the game. I don't think he caught a pass during regulation in that game and then suddenly boom they hit him for a slant it's a touchdown in the game winner uh in a game that they got outclassed uh, statistically but made the mm -hmm. big plays on defense with joseph Asai in particular yeah. to, to make it happen uh you bring on uh you bring up Bijan, and mm -hmm. uh he was he was phenomenal when he got it going he had that uh, spill in the opener against texas el paso that set him back a little bit and then he got rolling late in the season. I most notably saw him against Iowa State and against uh, Colorado late. Um, mm -hmm. How do you think that he should be utilized? Or is there a way to really mess him up, uh, just get him the football? I don't even know if we need to pass the ball, Mark, next season. Um, that's that's how much I'd be okay with using Bajan. Um, and so he he's really that talented. And, and it's I know the eye test people get mad at it, but there is an eye test. And whenever he's running, there's just something different about it. And you can see it if you've been watching long enough. And so he was being held back. Uh, Tom really valued seniority um, and his structure. And so basically they were holding Bajan back. And then finally, by the end of the season, they realized there's no excuse to not have Bajan as our main back. So I think that's not going to be an issue with Sark at all if you look at how he used Najee. So Bajan is going to be, I think, if you want to put the poster boy on the team, um, it'll it'll be Bajan. And uh, we were doing this weird like committee of running backs and committee of wide receivers subbing in and out. And I'm pretty sure that was Tom's influence, but I also know that Stan Drayton cares about his running backs and wants them to get to the NFL and have a career. So if you're bruising them on every play at the college level, you shorten their money making later on. So I just, I need to see if that was Stan or Tom controlling the running back snaps because we do need more Bajan in there, but we don't want to wear him out either. We're talking to the Texas Homer, so what you need to do here is uh, check out his uh, videos over on that channel. The Texas Homer right here on YouTube. Just search it, Texas Homer, and uh, you see the ticker down below. Please shop Amazon using the link in the description section that we provide below. Same shopping experience. Doesn't cost you a penny. You might as well do it. Help us build the channel again. Shop Amazon. And just use the link in the description section there. I don't want to overplay what I saw from Casey Thompson in the bowl game against Colorado because, you know, you can look at a stat sheet and see all sorts of passing performances in college football, and it's not the NFL. There are games in which quarterbacks are doing their jobs, but they're throwing for 500 yards because guys are wide open and they've got all sorts of uh, talent advantage on their side of the ball versus their opponent. But he was making a few throws in that game that were NFL kind of window throws. He, he made a couple of throws that were pretty crazy. And you probably remember one where he danced around a little bit in the pocket, pivoted mm -hmm. himself a number of times, and then he just kind of shoots it out between this, this window of three players that was just phenomenal. And then he threw a touchdown pass. One of his touchdown passes was a laser between a couple guys. Um, your thoughts about Casey Thompson? I loved it. So when whenever he came in in the Alamo Bowl, whenever Sam went down, we looked like a different team, uh, just in energy um, and scoring. It, it went it went insane. It was what probably 15, 15 minutes of real play on the clock. It was maybe a quarter and a half, 
And so he came in and I know exactly what you're talking about. When he darted out of the, he got nervous. He scrambled, realized that he got nervous and scrambled, planted his feet and threw a beautiful uh, ball to a crossing route. And so that's, that was actually the exact moment where I went, okay, this is something. Cause the first pass, it's just like, okay, you know, that looked good. But now seeing this, he has command of the offense, his body language. I'm really big into the psychology of players as well. And his uh, body language on the field, he looked like our quarterback. And so this is the crazy part is that we're going to eventually have to battle out with Card, who also is making all sorts of noise behind the scenes. So I think we have a good problem to have right now. You just mentioned that uh, you love to dive into the psychology of the player. I would think that this program and this team and this roster would be case example number one of the team that really needs to be studied psychologically in terms of hey, the talent's not producing on the field. Why? So what if, what have you read uh, over the ca- look, course of the last five years or so there? So what uh, it, it it's, it's through multiple coaches, right? So it's, it's not just Tom and I never want to seem like I'm bullying Tom. Tom did a lot of good things. I don't have a dislike of Tom. Um, but his some of there was just some organizational things going on there that he might have aired a bit authoritarian um, and in in a way that turned players off. And so you can have the Sabins of the world. You can you can act like that with rings. Um, but I think because we didn't have any rings and, you know, weren't getting the conference, then it just kind of turned players off. Um, you had a lot of the political stuff that occurred with UT that kind of, you know, put fan base against players and just a lot of drama and just not a healthy situation, regardless of how you feel about it. And so that was nerve wracking. And I think ultimately it's been development. So even with strong, a lot of strongs guys like his last class, they didn't draft high, but all of those players are doing really well in the NFL. And so when we do get them to the NFL, they're good. You know, they're starters and they're multi-year starters. So I think there's a little bit of a perception issue as well. So I think that somehow in NFL world, um, it, the rumors out that Texas can't develop. And so I think that's actually become kind of self-fulfilling to a certain degree. Um, but I think we, we have a shot with Cosme this year and maybe even potentially Osai. Um, so Tom technically did develop. It was just at the the last chance. So really it, it was development and there's a lot of the donor talk, which I think is kind of a cop out because there's not a university that doesn't answer to million dollar spenders at some, at some degree. So I, I really don't think it, that was it either. I just think truthfully, we didn't develop well and we had an ego with our scheme and we're going against some like real killers in the big 12. Like these are some real sharp, scheme guys this is probably the one of the most probably the most mentally daunting conference as far as scheme so you really have to be on your p's and q's studied up you can't be using schemes from two or three years ago it it has to be today's schemes to win the pro tom herman person would point to all the close losses you know in particular the just the iowa state game even though that was a disappointing season in 2020 it's also a compromised season so you got to take that with a grain of salt to a certain extent but if they beat iowa state in a game that came down to a last second field goal then they're playing in the big 12 championship game instead Mm -hmm. um but if you you and, and then you look at the other close losses year to year but then they also won a ton of close games maybe that they had no business so it probably balanced out i thought he was a good hire at the time that mm-hmm. he was brought in he certainly talks like a guy that's in charge that knows what he's talking about and is mm-hmm. in full command i just yeah again don't know why it didn't work out but you certainly shed some light on it in terms of just certain fits that uh, they tried to force and um, him, yeah, him Tom, to a program that he didn't necessarily wasn't at that status to run yet. You remember the, the tech game, right? Uh, with that crazy yeah. ending, what you'll notice about our team and why the games were close. The games were close because we were trying to do something called game control, which is something that was important to Tom. And, uh, and I agree with it. It makes sense, but we were, we were being a little bit silly with it. So we would try to, you know, slow down their offense towards the end and they would score on us. And we tried again. It just would not work. And so we couldn't game control. So by the end of it, we'd be down two scores and we got like a minute and a half to win the game. So they would open up the offense and they would throw it down the field to our best players. And what happened? 
we would score and score and score. So the problem was this when we were running out of time and we said, you know, forget it, let's open it up. We had no problem scoring. The only times we had problems scoring is whenever we were trying to do like this mental master uh, control of the field. And so that that was the big difference is whenever we just let it fly, we're a scary team. But when we overthink it, we are definitely slowing ourselves down. Got the uh, Texas Homer on the line. Uh, would encourage you to head on over to his YouTube channel right here, Texas Homer. You should be able to find it, as I did uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, when you look at the defense, what have the issues been there? How do you expect um, the coaching change to alter the, the defensive outlook? So I'm really excited about defense. Um, I just got done. I've been spending a week working on this defense video. And so that's – we're going to have – uh, Pete Kwiatkowski come in from Washington and he has a unique scheme. And so the scheme is going to be called a nickel defense, meaning five defensive backs. That's simple, right? Um, but whenever you take, whenever you have five defensive backs, that's mean you're going to have one less defensive lineman or one less linebacker, right? So that's the problem you face. Well, what PK did was he took his outside linebacker and his defensive end. Sorry, there's the camera. And he merged them together to make a Jack player. Um, and that's how you can cover the responsibilities of seven players with only six players. So our scheme is going to be very interesting. It's going to be ready for the Big 12, most importantly. Um, so we're going to need to be able to – you're not going to stop the spread. You can't stop the spread. You can slow the spread. And so that's what we're going to do on the back end. And the way to actually really shut it down is through great defensive line play. You need to scare that quarterback. You need to confuse that quarterback and that offensive line. And luckily, I'm not worried about defensive line at all. So, we, you know, we had Osai, he's gone, which is like, what are we going to do? Well, we still have Collins, Broughton, Keandre, Sweat, you know. And so we have an awesome defensive line, and that's honestly going to be the key to winning in the Big 12. Um, but because we have a fifth defensive back now, we're going to have a nickel back. So we have to figure out, is that going to be a third safety or a third corner? And so I believe, and I think Nick said the same on your show, I think the third defensive back should be a corner. Um, and so we would have three on the field, and we have a new transfer in Darian Dunn coming from McNeese State. And he's a mean man corner. Like, he's going to fight you on every play. He's awesome to watch. And so I'm thinking that's how we're going to end up. But I need to see more development. But we have Bo Davis on the D-line. We have Cho doing inside linebackers. We have Kwiatkowski doing outside linebackers. Gideon on safety. Joseph on corners. So I'm I'm really excited about the defense. I'm excited about the scheme and our guys. And I, we're going to be developed just fine um, with that staff. I mean, Bo Davis, NFL, Kwiatkowski has 40 picks. Um, you know, we're going to be fine there. So defense is, is not what I'm worried about at all, actually. Um, defense is what I think will be the strong point. I'm not sure if it'll be this next year, but definitely the year after. I'll take this kind of talk all day, so I'll just leave it up to you. Is there anything we haven't hit on either side of the ball that uh, you think is important? Yeah, I think I think at the end I'm a you know psychology philosophy guy and trying to mix it into football and see how it works. And I think I think our biggest problem last year is that we kept preaching that we were an aggressive team, that you have to be aggressive and we have to be the tough team. But our play calls did not match that. We were you know with 30 seconds before the half we were running the ball out. Um, we were not we were not going for two against OU in the Red River Shootout when we had the dom the momentum right then. So. The biggest thing for us, and I've seen Sark do this at Bama, especially talking to like Bama insiders, um, his philosophy actually matches what's going to happen on the field. So you will actually see that attacking offense, exciting, explosive. I think it was something like 14 to 19 percent of their plays were, were explosive. That's a giant rate for an offense. So I think mostly what you'll see is a cohesive, logical philosophy going forward and that'll actually be our foundation to build all of our schemes and development on what are reasonable expectations for this season uh reasonable is national champion i'm just kidding uh reasonable to me is going to be eight eight wins and i really want nine there i will i think reasonable we can do a top six class maybe a top five with how we're trending right now um we did lose the stewart commitment which hurt us but we should be able to trend there and I want to be in the mix for the conference championship, you know, two weeks before, you know, so maybe it won't come down to the last week, but I, we need to be competitive because this team is competitive and it should be with our talent.
Good stuff from the Texas Homer. Again, he's right here on YouTube, so you're right here. So just check out his videos. You can uh, type it right in the search bar, the Texas Homer, and check him out uh, right there. We appreciate you stopping by. It's a good time, and you are welcome back anytime, man. Appreciate it, Mark. Welcome. <laughs>